Uh, Mary Fetchett. I lost my 24-year-old son, Brad, and uh, co-founded Voices of September 11th, uh, probably in October of 2001. And what was your goal, what was your intent for Voices? Well, my background is social work, and so I recognize the challenges that the families faced. And, uh, and when you think about 10 years ago, we didn't have the technology that we have today. And, uh, of course, we weren't prepared to respond to uh, an attack of, of that scope. So when I started going into the Family Assistance Center in New York, I realized uh, people were coming in from around the country and, and around the 93 countries that lost citizens that day. So voices really began um, because of my social work background to provide information on a wide range of support services. Uh, we're working with over 13,000 families that live around the country and the world. Uh, we have um, an office in Connecticut and New Jersey and now Washington, D.C. We're meeting with the Pentagon families. In 2006, we launched the 9-11 Living Memorial Project. So we're meeting with each of the families to document the lives that were lost. And we're scanning photographs, written materials, photographing tangible items. Uh, could be a wallet that was returned to them from ground zero, or it might be a quilt that someone made, or even a Snoopy collection. Um, you know, to really convey to the world and to future generations who these people were. So we've actually, in uh, the time that um, we've worked on the project, we've met with over 1,100 family members. Uh, and we've uh, digitized over 60,000 images that we'll be transferring. It's online, but we'll be transferring it also to the museum at Ground Zero. What's it like? You know, I think one of the most trite questions a reporter can ask is, how do you feel? But I think in this story, it's the most appropriate. Ten years later, how does it feel to be at this location? Well, this is a tenth year we've had an event for the families uh, the day before uh, the anniversary. Certainly, uh, today, uh, the um, conversation has changed over the years. And we're all um, contemplating uh, the 10th anniversary tomorrow and the opening of the memorial. So we're seeing a lot of people uh, that may have come the first or second year um, but haven't been here since. And then, of course, some families that have never come to Ground Zero that are here to visit the site and visit the memorial and see their loved ones' names etched in the uh, the. Um, stone uh, at the memorial site. So I think there's, um, we've developed such wonderful relationships, you know, with thousands of families over the last 10 years that we've really gone through this journey of grief together. But we've seen great resiliency in the families. I mean, they've established hundreds of foundations in honor of their loved one um, that are benefiting so many people. Um, there are scholarships uh, for need-based students that yeah, wouldn't normally be able to go to college. Uh, we have uh, one family member that built a wing on the hospital of a building, uh, another one that has a literacy program and has distributed thousands of books to school children and built uh, school libraries. So I think the, the strength of the human spirit certainly comes comes through these families that, despite the loss that they suffered, uh, they're able to, to help others uh, in honor of their loved ones. And then certainly the, the wonderful relationships and support that we find with one another. What would you say to those, and there have been those who have said that maybe the media or in general, too much is being made of this anniversary. What, what would you say to them? Well, 9-11 uh, was a turning point in the history of our country. Uh, we weren't prepared. Uh, we didn't anticipate a terrorist attack. Certainly myself, I lost my 24-year-old son, Brad, who was on the 89th floor of Tower 2. Uh, I didn't know that his, his life was at risk uh, working in that building. And I certainly had no clue about the thoughts of a terrorist attack here in the U.S. 
So I think that uh, when I think about um, how it changed our country, children that uh, were born after 9-11 are growing up in a much different world. I think on one hand, uh, there's concern about another terrorist attack and about the importance of being prepared in your homes, in your communities, and then nationally. Uh, on the other hand, I see with the interns, we have over 20 interns uh, in our offices, um, some of who were just in first grade on 9-11. And I see in these, uh, these young people uh, a thirst for learning, a thirst for being engaged. Um, you know, they've learned through 9-11 that it's important to be educated about the issues um, that impact themselves and their families, but they also see a global world and how we are connected and the importance of, you know, international relations and, and um, you know, tolerance for, uh, you know, different nationalities and religions. So I think in some ways, um, the way that our country unified after 9-11 lives on today and the, the many ways that people make an important contribution in their communities and, you know, in the nation as a whole. What was your reaction when you heard there was a credible terror threat in Washington and New York for this weekend? Well, I was one of the families that pushed for the 9-11 Commission to be established. Uh, although I didn't have any, you know, uh, any real understanding of the political process, I became immersed in it uh, and the work to get the 9-11 Commission established. I think in the research that we did and then working with the 9-11 Commission, uh, Governor Kane and Lee Hamilton and Senator Lieberman and Senator Collins, we've been to enough hearings and we've done enough research that we realize that yes, uh, you know, we are safer today um, based on the reforms that they've implemented, but we're, we're still at risk today. And certainly New York and some of the larger uh, cities uh, you know, at the top of the priority list uh, with regard to the thoughts of, you know, the possibility of another attack. So, you know, I think that um, Ray Kelly and uh, Mayor Bloomberg, and the people in charge here in New York City, are not only aware of the risk, but they're acting on it. Final question. This will be broadcast in throughout the Midwest tomorrow, the interview that we're doing right now. What do you want to tell folks in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota uh, about the families uh, of those who lost loved ones on September 11th? Well, I think, first of all, I want them to make them aware that Voices of September 11th is supporting families around the country. And although there were 3,000 victims, uh, they have hundreds of family members and friends living around the country and around the world. Um, we would like to be in touch with them uh, if there's any way that we can help support them, um, you know, through the use of technology and distributing information or having our staff in our office be able to answer their questions over the phone. Um, you know, we, we find that with working over with over 13,000 families around the country, if you can help people through the process, if you can provide them the information and the support that they need, um, you know, that I think that they, they can um, have new hope uh, for the future. Uh, they can uh, better um, support their family through difficult times. I'd also encourage them to participate in the Living Memorial Project. I mean, we are meeting with families, as I said, around the country and around the world, uh, but through the use of technology, uh, they can send us photographs via email, they can send us photographs in the mail, and um, of course, uh, when we're traveling around the country, we can meet with them personally, or if they're here in the Northeast, um, you know, we'd be happy to meet with them in our offices. I think it's an important historic pro project, but it's also uh, a therapeutic project. Uh, with each photograph comes a story, and each family member has a very different perspective of the person that died. 
Uh, you know, a mother is going to have different photographs than a brother. A fraternity brother is going to have different photographs than a family member. And then a colleague and friend, you know, that they spent, uh, you know, some of their free time with is going to have those memories that are important to share. They can also visit our website. Uh, we've created a, a website for each victim that died that day. Uh, and a guest book. So if they'd like to, you know, look through our website on the 9-11 Living Memorial Project and, um, you know, enter a reflection or learn about the people and learn about their lives, not their deaths.